Hello, reformers, and welcome back to Parisno. Now, when we left off, we had just defended and indeed retaliated against the opponents that took Galway, and now we are going to be making our way on here to Kelradan Castle, because even though it is a siege tower, there are only 83 or so defenders here, and I think it would be a rather nice idea to, well, shall we say expand our borders a very slight amount, as we can see here. Caradon Castle, Nadar Castle, and of course we've just lost Slezg Castle, but that is all the way up here, and I feel as though it may have been a bit more of a distraction than we would have liked. So I feel as though going for Caradon, and then maybe Nadar Castle would probably be a good idea for this episode, and then we'll just react to any kinds of aggression from the other factions. But right now, it doesn't appear like we are having many difficulties, obviously apart from Slezg and having to actually create this siege tower. I am not incredibly pleased about that, that is for sure, but mm, what can you do? It has to be done every now and again. Oh, and here we go, we are actually getting some vassals from the Kingdom of Tolrania, and they are actually coming to us, the Reformian Rebellion. Yes, that's wonderful, isn't it? Okay, so Machavir and the Tolranians have now made a non-aggression treaty, which I have to say is mighty unfortunate. I really did not want them to do that. I would love to have everyone in a constant state of war and then maybe have a couple of well, maybe a couple of weeks where everyone decides, oh, you know what, let's just make peace and everyone can chill out for a little bit. But no, it appears that we are having some great difficulties here with four, I think, four factions currently at war against us. And now, I actually believe I will be paying this bard 1,000 orums. And there we have it, 23 renown for us right there, I like that. Now, unfortunately enough, many of our villages are currently being raided constantly, in fact, and I am very irritated by that. I am hopeful that we will be able to eliminate some of these vassals if they come close to us, like that guy, for example, 144 units he had. We would have been able to take him on no problem at all. Hopefully we have enough pathfinding skill to make it and indeed chase him down before he is able to get away from us. Unfortunately, we are having some, well, shall we just say major difficulties with our food situation. And yes, I'm not incredibly happy about that, that's for sure. And hopefully we'll be able to head to Galway after this and purchase some. I do believe I actually took a look at the marketplace and it seemed as though there weren't any pieces of food available for sale. So I am a little bit worried, I have to say. Now, the other thing that we have to worry about, of course, is the fact that we have an overwhelming amount of cavalry and not too many archers. I would very much appreciate the archers to be stood at the front here. Hopefully we can actually deal enough damage to maybe even win this, at least partially, before we even get to the battlements. I feel as though that would be a very, very nice thing to do. Unfortunately, Allendale has already been taken out. Now, we actually do have a companion tab, and I'm going to be moving Kara back here, because she is our backup medic, and, well, we do not want her to die, do we? So we're going to be moving her back there. Hopefully she will not get sniped or anything untoward happening to her. That would be pretty bad. And otherwise, we're just going to stay here and hope that we actually deal some good damage. Now, we have two different shields, and I think that is actually all we have as our weaponry. I was actually thinking of getting a crossbow or something along those lines because that would actually give us a little bit of ranged combat and it would give us some more versatility because right now we literally have one thing that we can do and that is, of course, bash people over the head with our club, our mace, should we say, and take them prisoner, of course, which I'm not saying is a bad thing. That is far from being a bad thing because, of course, Taking prisoners is our main source of income, and I would love to be able to do that a little bit more. So hopefully once I have a little bit of time, once many of the factions have either been destroyed or made peace with us, I would like to be able to head back to Realm of the Falcon territory and recruit a couple of units from there 
and hopefully level them up because of course they do have an overwhelming amount of units that use blunt weaponry and we would love to be able to use that to take even more prisoners because even though we have around 230,000 in our inventory right now that is not going to last forever and of course we are currently hemorrhaging money in the weekly wage which is I think currently at around 24,000 every single week which is actually not that much because if you think about it we're able to take prisoners very easily indeed and upon taking prisoners obviously we have to sell them and upon selling them we are usually able to get about 24,000 so if I'm able to continually take people prisoner and actually have that work well for us then we could in theory keep all of that money for expenditures for example crafting and indeed building prison towers and maybe some other enhancements to our castles and towns and of course we would like to recruit more units when and if we require them otherwise we are going to be mm, maybe dwindling a little bit in the power department because it seems as though our power curve has reduced somewhat but we're still a force to be reckoned with but yes the main problem that I discussed some time ago is the fact that in Perizno because there are so many good units and well quite a few bad ones as well but there are many many good units the fact is whenever we do a siege or something along those lines we are bound to lose a couple of units as you can see here we've lost four units nothing to write home about really because obviously we took out 81 but in the case of us actually taking on more than that and by that I mean around hmm well I could just pull a number out of thin air here but taking on maybe 300 units maybe 500 units anything along those lines they are obviously going to be taking out more of our units killing them in fact and as a result the prisoners that we are able to get from the garrisons for example this rescuing the prisoners right now they are sometimes not as good as the units that we lost so the power creep that we are currently then faced with is going to be reduced and that is exactly the reason why sometimes we need to run on over to Realm of the Falcon or something along those lines and recruit a couple of units for us to oh wow we actually have a weekly cost of 29,000 I thought we had 24 never mind okay but yes running to Realm of the Falcon recruiting a couple of units and then leveling them up as quickly as we can with our inevitable trainer skill that is just pounding away and training them very very well and fast so let us give this to Lord Marcus who will hopefully do a good job in defending it I will not be taking the loot from the treasury either because I would like to keep many of our castles and villages relatively high prosperity obviously I'm not entirely sure whether it counts for castles to be honest but I do know that castles obviously do give some kind of compensation for your ownership over them but yes I would like to try and keep them as rich as possible so that if we so desire and if at some point we have some problems and one of our vassals decides oh you know what I'm gonna defect or something along those lines then it would probably be a really nice idea to wow that was that was pretty impressive it would probably be a pretty nice idea to keep the castles at a pretty nice prosperity level and as I was speaking about that, Caradan Castle just got hugely reinforced. Okay, we are hopefully... Wait a minute. Come on. Ah, no, unlikely. That's unfortunate. I was really hopeful that I'd be able to intercept that fellow. They are very much overcommitting to Nadar Castle right now. As you can see, there are a huge amount of vassals actually coming here. Oh, I think I may know what's going on there. And here we have Lord Farn, or Fan, and we are about to take him on. Now, he does actually have a pretty reasonable relation with us right now. As we can see here, he has 10. He is cooperative. Shall we try to persuade him? I think we will. Ah, can I persuade you to say a little more? Nope, it appears not. So our persuasion skill is not enough to deal with his 
stubbornness. That is a little unfortunate, isn't it? But nevertheless, we are going to be reducing his relation ever more by attacking him, of course. But we must reduce our Machiavellian opponent's presence in this area. Because I have a feeling that because they are rallying in the nearby castle of Nadar, we are going to be faced with a slight campaign. I think we are probably going to have a campaign on our hands very, very soon, as they do have Agathor Krex, who is the leader of their faction, among them. So I have a feeling that we are probably going to have a couple of difficulties with them very, very soon indeed. So let's try and be a little bit cautious about how we deal with these units right here, because if we take too much damage, we could, in theory, face the wrath of Agathor Krex himself. He may decide, oh, you know what, I'm going to come out of my castle and I'm going to intercept that fellow named Scout Striker Wilkins. You never know. He may decide to do that, and he may decide that we are weak enough for him to actually be able to prevail in Mortal Kombat. As we can see here, I just took a critical wound to the face, and now my mount is crippled. That is actually quite sad. But nevertheless, they will be rejuvenated, or he or she will be rejuvenated, unlike myself, who will just take many bolts to the face and be completely destroyed. Wow, that is a really undignified pose, isn't it? That is just... Yeah, okay, so he apparently dislocated his arm, or it broke, or something along those lines, and his neck is definitely broken, so I'm not entirely sure how he's going to survive that, but nevertheless, Scout Striker Wilkins will just pick up where he left off, no doubt, and I'm really quite surprised that I have not charged anyone in yet, so let's charge everyone in here. Do bear in mind that Lord Fan only has 73, 74 units, and we... Yes, we fell before his might. So, that's great. That's great, isn't it? Yes. Every time that happens, every time we face a lord that has less units, dramatically less units, should I say, than us, I always have the fortunate, fortunate luck for me to be taken out very, very quickly indeed by some unknown thing. I actually had my shield up. Didn't I have my shield up? I'm pretty sure I had my shield raised, so I'm quite impressed that they were able to deal such a significant amount of damage for them to even be able to take us out more than once. I mean, they seriously headshotted me at least three times, at least twice anyway, but that was very impressive, very, very impressive. So, wow, yeah, that reminds me, we may need to get some Machiavellian crossbowmen when we become at peace with them again. It would be really nice to gain some peace with at least one faction, because obviously we are at war against the Kaikoth Confederation, the Machiavians, of course, the Reich, as well as the Redwoods. So we are going to be having some difficulties with all of them for quite some time, but I'm hopeful that some of them will then decide to give us a peace agreement, because as we know, the Redwood Nation actually only has a very small portion of territory, and I'm actually going to show you. Yeah, I'm actually going to show you after this, because... I think it would be quite interesting to see that because they are being very stubborn in their pursuit of war. Yeah, not very good, is it? So as we can see here, yes, look at this. They only have one, two castles and one, two towns. So I am incredibly surprised that they are not deciding to, well, not deciding to offer us any kind of peace agreement or any kind of resolution. So, I have to admit, that is very surprising. Hmm. And somewhat irritating, as well, if I may say so. And, ah, hmm, okay, so we are now having some difficulties here, because our trainer is no longer going to be able to deal some exceptional experience damage to our units in the garrisons here. We are going to instead have a problem... The Reformian Rebellion has not responded to the Valahir clan's provocations, and Scout Striker Wilkins suffers a loss of face among his more bellicose subjects. Ah. Well, that's unfortunate, isn't it? So the Valahir clan is probably going to be declaring war against us 
very soon, but for now I really want to get back to Galway and hopefully get some incredible food. That would be really nice. So let's just see here. Marketplace. Yes, there we are. Thankfully enough, they have been restocked. That is wonderful. I really do appreciate that. And it's going to go in literally a day. So <laughs> say goodbye to our food. And yes, we're going to be selling these things on. And that as well. Thank you very much. Okay, so there we have it. Now we do have a couple of prisoners. We are going to be heading on over here. And I thought that was a ransom broker. That would have been wonderful. But, of course, we don't really have too many right now. I'm going to be getting some prisoner squires because they level up to be some, Im some very impressive units as well. Incredible, in fact. Now, what I would love to do is take Grunwalder Castle. I know I am splitting my energies somewhat, but Nadar Castle has now just been overly garrisoned with six lords. And the greatest thing about that is that they are now basically useless. They're doing literally nothing, and we have the opportunity to now split our energy towards some other opponent, and that might actually be a good idea, because I was, as I said previously, going to be attacking Kelradan, but Kelradan is unfortunately now out of the question. It has way too many units there, way too many units. And speaking of way too many units, it appears as though there is actually a lord stationed here as well. So, where are we going to go? Well, that's the thing. I actually don't know. We are not at war against the Tolranians any further. They have a very small piece of land as well. The only ones that are in pretty good shape, the Hakon, are going to be incredibly powerful by the time we get to them. I have no idea whether we're going to even be able to deal with them, to be honest. They have so many towns and castles and their... Wow, their exceptional territory growth is just insane. Very, very nice indeed for them. Obviously, I'm a little bit worried about it. Okay, well, I suppose instead of heading on over to Grunwalder then, we're going to be making our way back into Maccabean lands. That seems to be the only place we can really go to and make a difference. Hopefully, make a difference at least. Let's just see what's actually going on here anyway. We have some outlaw mercenaries running around. They actually have a lot of prisoners but only nine mercenary lances that are really worth taking because obviously the prisoner units, while they are exceptional once they have leveled up, they are, well, pretty slow to level up in actual fact. So they're most likely going to be dying as a result over many days and nights of battle. And so we are going to just take a look at what's actually going on here. We have some glory-seeking men as well as Lord Logerson. I think I would like to deal some damage to this particular fellow. Let's see if we can actually... Ah, we actually gained two lords in the encounter radius, which is very nice to see, because even though this guy has a huge amount of relation, I feel as though we probably just want to eliminate him. He has 141 units, and I don't think we can really risk trying to persuade him, although... Mm, we don't really have that much persuasion, do we? Not much persuasion skill at all. I am going to try to stay alive now. Do bear in mind my mount is crippled, so I really should have unequipped it. But nevertheless, we are just going to try our very best. And in actual fact, I'm going to get off it. And... Oh, no, please. Please, come back. Yes. Yes. No, please. Oh, no, of course. Okay, well, nevertheless, we are having some great difficulties with the Maccabean Heavy Marksman. I was hopeful that I'd be able to get on one of those really nice mounts. Ooh, this is a Perizno Purebred mount. I actually like this quite a bit. Okay, let's see what we can actually do with it. Not bad, not bad. I am not incredibly happy with... Wow, not incredibly happy with the armor on it. That is just... Oh my goodness, that was very, very weak indeed, but yes, I suppose I am used to the armored mounts, so I can make more mistakes than otherwise would be appropriate with a mount that has less armor. So let's just deal some damage here. A little bit of damage every now and again. Come on, let's deal some damage. There we are. Okay, well, not really dealing damage to the targets that I would otherwise like to. There we are, that's a little better. Okay, now this is getting a little bit too overzealous, I feel. Probably. Maybe I can take this guy out. I would like to be able to take that guy prisoner. Yes, we were able to knock him unconscious. That's very nice. Anyone I am able to actually kill is 
pure profit. So we are going to be pretty happy about that. Pretty happy to see that happen. Especially with high level units like the Halberdier and the the uh, North Guard as well, of course. So yes, we are going to hopefully be able to eliminate a couple more. Ooh, look at that guy. Let's see if we can take this guy out. Uh, he saw that we were coming toward him, of course he did. And 75 damage to the face, and yet he was able to survive. Very impressive, I have to admit. Very, very impressive. So let's just have a look here, see if we can take out these guys. Yes. Yes, okay, come on. Ah, unfortunate, unfortunate. Not able to get that North Guard in our sights just there. But we were able to at least take out... Wow, quite a considerable amount of units, but we have already lost 13 as well. Now, I don't believe either of these lords has a good amount of prisoners to offer us. So, we are obviously going to be in for a spot of bother with replacing many of those units. And now it has actually just had a mist fall upon the battlefield. And we are going to have quite a few difficulties with our ranged units, because obviously they need to see. So, let's try and get that going shall we let's try and see if we can actually get a couple of units in a good position here I'm gonna try and get our archers in a good position now do bear in mind that hopefully considering we are up a hill it will make it a lot harder for the enemy's cavalry to be effective and as we can see the elves appear to be very very much used to fighting in the mist because of course the woods and the forests near Fawn Iron which is their capital city are littered with foggy and misty days so we are of course going to have an advantage in this case as we can see the Elvery Redwood Rangers are absolutely destroying our opponent right now and I am not even needing to do anything nope didn't need to do anything that was pure and simple archery pure and simple archery very very nice to see that I have to say and whoa very nice damage oh yes look at that even on a crippled mount, we are able to deal some pretty considerable damage. And now I believe we're actually going to be sending our units in there. Not our archers, of course. I am going to be repositioning our archers once our cavalry have gotten over this hill here. And we're going to be replacing them now. There we go. Just to be on that hill there. Let's see if I can actually deal a little bit more damage. It would be rather nice to get some more prisoners to take. Wouldn't it? I hope so, at least. Come on, let's see if we can deal some damage to that guy. Yes, a nice marksman. Hmm. They sell for a pretty good amount, I gotta say. So, I'm hopeful that we'll be able to gain a couple more. Maybe that guy? Hmm. A Machavian Squire. Not exactly what we're looking for. I'm surprised and pretty amused that I am talking about the values of units as I am knocking them unconscious with our exceptional mace, of course. Yes, we are completely a slave trading faction right now. Oh, yes. It has brainwashed me rather significantly. Oh, yes. Okay, so mm, it appears as though they are actually getting some good advantage points right here on top of this hill, and I'm actually really surprised. Who are these units? Because right now I don't believe the... Ah, they're using some Reich units. Okay, that's actually pretty impressive. So there must be a defector in our midst here, unless they rescued them or something along those lines, but I'm pretty sure that those units are specialist units that only the leader of the Reich can actually use, so that is a little bit worrying. I'm not entirely sure what's going on there. They may be sharing resources or something along those lines. Probably not, but you never know. The AI is a little bit tricky sometimes. I'm pretty sure they just rescued them, but you never know. Okay, there it is. And now we have only 18 to take out. And it is now raining. We have gone through almost all of the weather effects that are some included in the mod, I suppose. But goodness me, that is really quite impressive. Come on. Yes, yes. We were able to knock him unconscious. Excellent. Thank you very much for allowing me to do that. Everyone else in the battle. Oh, yes. We need to make sure that we can actually take out these guys. Whoa, that guy has actually a very large weapon on his back right there. Hopefully able to avoid getting poked in the face with it, of course. So we're going to try and attack him from the flank. Maybe from the rear as well. We never know. We may want to make sure that we don't take any damage from it. Because, of course, it is a very long weapon. And being on a mount, 
it is going to cause us a great deal of difficulty. But there it is, we have now attained victory against those two. And no, I don't believe they are defectors, so they must have rescued those Reich units, in fact. So let us now be taking many of these enemies prisoner, and we are going to be selling them. Look at how many we were able to get, and some very highly ranked units as well. I am going to be looking forward to seeing what they are actually going to sell for, because they are our livelihood after all. We have 28,000 in wages, and we need to make sure that we stay above 200,000 in my opinion at least. It really doesn't matter too much, but I would like to be able to be somewhat safe in the knowledge that we are okay in terms of our funds. And so, we are just going to be leveling up a couple of our units here. Oh yes, some more of those Renweirds. I really do love those units. They are exceptional. Let's get some Parisno Great Knights as well. And we'll level up some Freelancer Man-at-Arms. Oh yes, actually very nice indeed to see some of those. Shock Cavalry as well as Cavalrymen. And there we have it. Now we do have a couple of companions to level up, but we will be saving that for the next episode, as well as, of course, selling 70 prisoners to a ransom broker. And maybe, just maybe heading on to Yelbegi Castle and taking it. So, I thank you very much for watching, and I will see you next time.